So, here you see again the anterior view of the skull, but what I'm actually going to do is turn this around so that we can look into the skull. So we've taken off the top, where you would see the parietal and the frontal bones here, and we're looking on the inside, so this is a cross section. I'm going to point out the large bones and then do all of the individual stuff. So, the same bones that you see on the outside or what you see on the inside, so this right here would be the occipital bone. Okay? This right here then would be the frontal bone. The other bones that you can see here, this little portion that looks sort of like an arrow, all right, that whole outline, that would be the ethmoid bone. So it's the part of the ethmoid bone you can see from this view. This bone here that has sort of a bat or butterfly shape to it, that whole thing is called the sphenoid bone. A couple of things to point out. In the occipital bone, you have this very large opening that's called the foramen magnum. All right, so that's the opening through the, uh, the spinal cord to come up to the brain. All right. In the sphenoid bone, again, this sort of bat or butterfly shape, there's this very special portion right here. You can see my pointer is going down in there. This is called the cella tersica. Roughly translates to Turkish saddle. So it's like a saddle you would see on a, uh, an elephant rather than a horse or a camel. Uh, rather than a horse. And the cool thing about this is it helps to protect the pituitary gland which just hangs down from the brain. All right, interesting features of the ethmoid bone that you can see here. We've got this ridge, this pointed section right here. That would be called the crista galli and it's a point of attachment for the dura mater or the outer lining of the brain to help keep that secure. And then these valleys that you see right here might be difficult to tell but it has sort of a sponge-like appearance to it. Those valleys are called the crib reform plate. Again, crib reform plate. It has that R in there, don't forget. And the cool thing about this, it has a spongy appearance, and the reason it looks that way is there's actually little holes there which allow the uh, nasal uh, nerves to sort of come up through there and bring your olfaction or your smell right to the brain.